Hey everyone, my name is Pritam and you are watching Tech with Pri. Welcome to my channel and I'm back with another exciting technical video. And this is the fourth video of our newly created technical series, which is known as ServiceNow and JavaScript, where we are learning the fundamental of JavaScript from starting to what is a programming language, what is JavaScript to up to like how you can write a program using if else, for loops, arrays, objects and many more if you do not understand fundamental of any language it's not only javascript it could be python ruby any language then you won't be able to go further on the advanced topic right and also this is gonna help in our next series which we are going to do which is this service now development all this javascript concept we are going to discuss throughout this series that's gonna help right so we are learning it together so let's continue the journey so now so in my last video, I have shown you where you are going to learn this JavaScript code, right? Where we are going to practice, where we are going to learn different concepts, right? So I have shown you two different ways. One is in the VS code, right? Visual Studio code. And I've shown you how to install VS Studio code and how to link up the JavaScript file, right? This is the lab.js which I have created. And also an index file is there. And another way I've shown you, which is the service now. In the service now background script, which you can see here. So I've shown you how you can connect your service now to Visual Studio to get this kind of experience. So let me tell you again, normal people who are using service now, if they open the background script by typing here, they won't be able to see this black, black screen, which is a white screen. And this is not good as VS Studio code at all, because you're not going to get any kind of suggestion, everything you have to type and then when you hit on run script, it would open in a different output would open in a different page. So I've shown you that how you can connect, how you can use the plugins of the Visual Studio inside of the uh, service. Now, there was a quick demo I've shown you. I told you that I'm gonna write it the code here, all the all the classes. Uh, I would type here run script and it would display the output in the right hand side. I've shown you already. But what I have understood is that because I'm going to do this in class by class, right? In different class, we are going to learn about different concepts, right? So that is the reason it would be very easy for me if I'm gonna, you know, save all these things, save all those code which I'm doing right now. So maybe in the next class, I need uh, to use some, reuse some code, which I've shown you in the first class. You know, that would be a sync in a sync. So there are so many uh, way Visual Studio can help me on that, right? Because if I type code here in the service now instead of service now, everything would work fine, absolutely. And I don't need to go to the browser to refresh it, to check the output. But the problem would be once I'm done with the class, when I close this window, again, I open for the, for the next class, there I won't be able to see any of these codes because this is how the background script has been created, okay? So it's like whatever you are writing, it would show here the output. And then if you if you close service now it would be just gone okay so that's why it's like a background script name okay but you can definitely practice it uh, for me i think it would be beneficial if i follow class by class and that would be good in the vs studio so i'll switch back to vs studio so again i have explained all these things how i have done so this is the lab.js file where we are going to write the javascript code throughout this class so this is uh, our index.html page which i have created on last day right you remember Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna do like this so that I can see the VS Studio at the same time the output, right? So let's do one thing. Let's drag it out so that I can get the full screen, right? So now I have to open the inspect and here I need to go to the console because I'm going to print in the console.log, right? I've shown you last day. And if you are doing it on service now, all you need to do is the gs.print, right? Again, quickly, I'm going to show you js.print and here, let me write Pritam. Again, I've shown you this in the last day. So run script Pritam, you can see, right? Now here also console.log, we can simply use console.log, console.log and then we can put the string or the name of mine. Let's not discuss about string. <laughs> I would explain you all this thing. See, it's coming, right? So we are gonna do in the uh, Visual Studio. And again, sometime I can copy and also show you how it is working in the background script. It, it would be absolutely same and fine, right? It's again, uh, it's gonna help me class by class. That's why I'm doing it. All right, so the question is what we are going to learn today. So we would start programming today. 
uh, we would see not only printing name but different things basics of javascript programming which is very very important again all these classes of fundamentals are going to help you to learn some advanced course in future so pay your full attention all right so now you have seen that we can directly print in the console by typing console.log then we can put the value right also instead of a name i can just put any number also i can print any number so again you have to save it and then you have to come refresh you can see i can print number i can print name so now now these are the values so this 10 and then i have written pritam previously so these are called the values which are simply the piece of data right now these values we can store also in a variable so what is a variable which stores the value any kind of value you can put either it's a number it's a string or boolean value which we would see later all this kind of uh, different value where you can store it's known as variable and this variable actually stores in your computer memory now how you can declare a variable you can you have to declare the variable right so for an example just to show you var a equal to 5 now what does it mean this means this a is the name of the variable i'm declaring it mentioning var just to inform the javascript compiler or javascript engine that hey i have a variable which name is a right which is storing the value 5 that's the concept of a variable which stores the value how you can declare a variable var a equal to 5 which is absolutely fine but again it is 2023 and we are modern and we have to use the modern javascript things so that means what the concept would change no that means we can also use two other keywords to declare variable that we are learning one is the var var is a kind of an old one but there are so many applications where in javascript var is being still used one of the example is the service now service now still use the var keyword and it is absolutely fine see there would be no difference if we use var keyword and the keyword that i'm going to show you is the let keyword let let's say b equal to 10 okay now this is a way of declaring and this is another way of declaring right actually there is no difference let is introduced in the es6 version okay the modern javascript es 2015 javascript and where was used before then but it is still used again i am saying and i have also explained you that in the in my introduction of javascript class that javascript is backward compatible so where can be used throughout you know after 10 years also where can be used you are not going to have a problem right again the function is same okay now before i show you another keyword which is the const let me show you something so that you understand the you know difference between const and and this two keyword now let's move this and let's write let a equal to again you can use where in the service now development we are going to use a lot of var so let's use some let here in the javascript fundamental course right so let a equal to 5 i have declared i have i've told javascript that value of a is 5 okay fine right now i can print it console dot log and then a right very easy then i'm gonna save it and then here i'm gonna refresh it it's a 5 now i can write in this way also a equal to 10 now the value of a becomes 10 previously it was 5 so let's refresh it's 10 now so the value of the variable which are declared with let or var keyword can be changed but now i'll show you what is the use of constant so const keyword c-o-n-s-t each and everything you would get suggestion in the bottom so you don't need to write it all the way all the way now let's just click layer const b equal to 5 fine then let's change the value b equal to 10 so now let's try to print b also so i'll copy console.log and here i'm gonna write b okay a is a variable b is a variable so what i'm doing is that nothing but uh, for case of a i'm storing the 5 in the a and then i'm changing to 10 and then i'm printing a which i've already print 10 you know the use of a variable is that we can directly print the variable we don't need to print previously like what we are doing console.log5 or pritam so you can store any value and then you can print the variable so console.log b now here const b equal to 5 
so let's save it and the value would be you see there's an error the error is saying assignment to the constant variable which you can't do the name suggests it's a constant so it is saying it is a constant and you cannot change a value of constant so if i just remove b equal to 10 and then save it and then show you see the value remains 5 so the value of constant you cannot change so very simply if you want to change your value in the code for different reason maybe in a loop you want to declare a different variable again all these things i'm going to explain you but in such scenario we can use let or var other than that we can use the const okay now let's print some string so i'm gonna choose let first name equal to pritam so again you can put a single invited comma or double invited comma to declare the string again data types more about data types we will learn in the next video a uh, full video would be guided to you what are the data types and how you can declare that all of this thing we are going to learn in next video so for the time being uh, just remember that to declare a string variable you have to put invited comma either it can be single or double doesn't matter console.log and again i don't need to uh, type my name again because i already stored the value in the first name variable so i'm just gonna save it and you see the name is here okay so this is how you can print string and the numbers and there are many other data types that are available like i was discussing so again all these things i'm going to show you in the next video but there are some more things that i'm going to show you today very important thing is that how you can declare a variable so we know that with the help of late const or the var we can use it based on our need what is the proper way for an example now let a equal to 5 a equal to 10 const b now this a b is fine i mean very simple name of a variable but what i'm trying to say is that it should be valid valid means for an example like this you can see let first name equal to pritam this is much more understandable instead of a equal to 10 so for an example if we declare in this way let age equal to 10 then you are printing console dot log the age now if anyone sees your programming they would be able to understand that okay he's trying to print his first name he's trying to print the age right so this is how you have to name the variable in a proper way so that people can understand so you see 10 is coming now there is another way and that's the best practice i would suggest to you and any developer javascript developer they follow the same thing it's called the camel case of you know the way of writing so what is that this is simply nothing but I will just write the again the same line. So it is the let let first name. So I'll put F I R S T first and N in capital and first name equal to this time let put a take with pre in this way. So you see in the camel case of writing the first letter would be in this lower case and when you are making the conjunction you know making the junction like first name. So it should be n in capital. So same like last name or maybe like for an example, you are declaring birth year. So B would be in small or in the lower case and birth Y would be in capital. Okay, it may be 1995. So this is called the camel case of writing. Again, you can write in this way also like let birth year like birth underscore year. So that's not a problem so yeah it has to be a string so 995 i should not write in you know the in the uh, invited comma because invited comma means the string or the text but we are putting number that's the, my year of birth so it should be without string okay so this is the way you can declare the variable and also another thing what you can do is that you can declare with dollar so dollar birth year like this also you can do 19095 that's also fine this is a three way actually you can follow to declare variable but you cannot name a variable starting with a number so you just can't write like this let 5 uh, years equal to maybe 10 something like that you can't do that okay you would get an error you see because the variable name cannot start from this 5 so if you remove 5 you see it is fine okay and another important thing there are some keyword that are being used like for an example late const where these are the keyword again we have the for if 
function class so these are the name that you cannot use in the variable also right for an example you cannot write let for equal to 5 that would give error you see variable declaration not allowed so you cannot write it so if you just paid it dollar for that would work fine so i will give you a link uh, in my description where you would find all the list of the keywords in javascript so that you cannot use it now before ending this session what i'm going to show you is that what the main reason i came here which is the how you can write comment so two ways i'll show you how you can write comment first is the double slash that's it and then you can write anything that won't get execute so for an example class 1 where we are doing values and variable variables right so this is the class one now this is not going to execute execution would be start from the first line so now also if you want to you know just make it as a comment you can write it down like slash slash okay double slash uh, in front of it right so that is very very helpful so suppose you want to uh, you don't want to test this particular line of the code okay while printing so you just put it like this or maybe for an example you don't want to print to about you know this four line instead of typing double slash on every line you can do what you can just slash star and then you can put a star and slash then see it's a backslash so now this part of line is in the comment so this is how you can make comment and that's going to help me in our next class we would start from class two and we can check all the all this concept that we have gone through right so the, again this is just the start we are going to learn a lot of things so make sure if you find this video helpful hit the like button let me know in the comment section if you are enjoying if you are new in programming definitely you are gonna love it okay so see you in my next video guys don't forget to share this video and also don't forget to subscribe this channel bye bye take care